At this fitness class in the central Queensland town of Collinsville, most of these people have one thing in common. They either work in coal mining or have a connection to someone who does. Well, we've got mums, obviously, of husbands that are in mining. Um, I've got ladies that are in the office at mining as well. Um, I've got a few girls that actually are on dump trucks as well. Um, and then I've got the blokes that come in as well, that they uh, work out here and live in the camps. Mining has been the town's economic lifeblood for a century. But it's been a struggle ever since the coal power plant closed eight years ago. Now the promise of a big new coal project has people energised. Oh look, I'm, I'm all for coal mate, it's been here for years, it's going to be here for, for more years to come. If it goes ahead it'd be great, um, anything coming to Collinsville and making the place better, um, bringing jobs to our locals. Yes, definitely, the coal's here. Uh, by the time they get renewables uh, up and running, the, they need the power station, a clean coal one. Well, it's, it's a shell of its former self, you know. There's no football teams, there's, you know, we, we were renowned for our footballers in the old days and now we're down to about 1,100 population where in the good old days were three and a half, four thousand people. The Morrison government has given the green light for a feasibility study into a new coal-fired power station here. So it is determining where likely demand growth will be uh, throughout Queensland. It is looking at uh, infeasibility, uh, feasibility not only in terms of the environment, uh, but the location of the facility. The feasibility study was an election promise by the coalition, but lay dormant until pro-coal rebels and the nationals backed Barnaby Joyce's failed tilt at the leadership. Now it's been revived. Also looking at the Collinsville proposal, uh, which is a proposal that which has been around for some time. It's no secret that I've been frustrated about how long it's taken to get to this stage. Uh, Matt Canavan was Resources Minister until he resigned after supporting Barnaby Joyce. He's a strong believer in the Collinsville project. It is ridiculous in this country how long things take to get done. Does it show that Scott Morrison doesn't really support coal-fired power? Well, look, we're, we're progressing this project. I'm interested in results, right? I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't really care uh, um, about the, the differences we might have along the way. We might be looking at a taxpayer subsidy of about $1 million or thereabouts per job that would be created. So there's much better ways of investing uh, such money if we want to see it as regional structural assistance uh, to Northern Queensland. Economist Frank Yotso doesn't believe the project stacks up. He argues Queensland already has enough power generation and building a coal plant isn't competitive compared to new renewable projects. Might be as high as uh, two times higher uh, the average cost uh, from wind and solar plants even if you factor in uh, the cost uh, of smoothing out the intermittency of those plants uh, with energy storage. Usually the figures I've seen that are calculated with pumped hydro include, included only include storage for sort of five, six hours. Now, now what happens when we have multiple days of clouds? What happens uh, when the wind doesn't blow for a few days at a time, which it often does? You can't just shut the aluminium smelter down when the weather changes. Uh, we have a deficiency of power in North Queensland. We're a net importer of power. Mike Brunker is a Labor councillor who's concerned people believe the power plant is destined to go ahead while it still has huge question marks. At the end of the day, if some company out there wants to write a cheque for $2 billion, hallelujah, we'll dance in the streets in Collins. But until then, let's not carry on like two bob watches and, and, and you know, beat our chest and gnash our teeth when this could just be a fizz up. What's striking here in Collinsville is the old mothballed coal power station is right next to the new solar farm. Now Shine Energy, a small indigenous run company, wants to spend $2 billion building a high efficiency, low emissions coal power plant, which pollutes less than older coal fired power stations. This provides a reduction in emissions, but also at the same time, make sure that we have the reliability for the network. 
These new types of coal-fired power stations, they're perhaps 15, maybe 20% more effective than what's already operating in Queensland, but still very, very high carbon dioxide emissions. A one gigawatt power station run at full tilt would give you about 5 million tonnes of carbon dioxide per year. That's about 1% of current total national emissions in Australia. One key argument being made is the need for a new power plant to keep heavy industry going. We have a very large power station at Gladstone which is due for retirement, and my understanding is around 2030. If we want to ensure that we have foundries and we have smelters and we have all of those heavy types of industry delivering Australian products to the world, then we must have affordable electricity. Jobs are a key selling point. There's nowhere near enough of them here and Shine Energy says the plant will bring 600 ongoing jobs to the region. But crucially, it's yet to say how the project will be financed, only that it plans to have finance in place by mid next year. We're all for the construction of it. The amount of uh, permanent and ongoing work that would be created through construction phase and through operational phases is, is massive. Ex-miner Barry Collette has embraced renewable energy with his solar farm maintenance company, but the seasonal work isn't enough. He wants the coal plant to fill the shortfall. We've employed up to 25 staff um, constantly for a four month period and then we've had to back down to like a six person staff, it's, it fluctuates. Um, so yeah, we drop down dramatically, it doesn't hold a permanent workforce for us. These Collinsville High School students are starting a life skills course. Sign up, do some team building, that sort of thing, and work on confidence building, resume building. The course gets them ready for the workforce, and for some, that means the coal industry. Majority of my family works out in the mine, so just follow in their footsteps, I guess. And I will tell you why. It's good money, and they, most of my family enjoys doing it. If the coal plant does get the go-ahead, Shine Energy wants the Morrison government to indemnify the project against any future climate policy risk. Frank Yotso warns that could leave taxpayers exposed to huge losses if the power station became unviable. The financial risk of any new coal-fired power plant would be massive, so it would need to be the taxpayer that underwrites all of this, and it would be the taxpayer that pays the inflated bills for decades to come. Should the government indemnify Shine in its proposal so that it doesn't face that risk? I can't answer that question yet. Let's wait and see what the study says. People here say they'll be watching the major party's stance on coal closely, with a state election just months away. It's my view that the $4 million should have been put straight into the construction. Let's just start the damn thing. What worries me, in two, three or four years' time, uh, if nothing happens, uh, the people in Collinville are left with a bad experience. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.